Some interesting shapes there. They all look familiar. Cool. Hey, what's happening guys? In my never-ending quest to find cheap products that work well, I was scouring Amazon for cheap soldering stations. Now I've come across a lot of soldering stations in the past. Um, currently, my favorite yeah, we can get it from there. Hold on. Coming out of the holder. Yeah, currently my favorite is the uh, KS GER, which runs between 50 and 60 bucks, depending on where you get it, but awesome station. This guy, on the other hand, is uh, $16 off of Amazon, which means you could probably get it for half that from one of the other usual Chinese suspects if their entire manufacturing base hasn't been shut down by the Wuhan by now. Anyway, 50 watt, 374 to 896 Fahrenheit, which is 190 to 480 Celsius. Yes, I had to look that up. So, like I said, this costs $16.74 off of Amazon, and it is temperature controlled. That's my one, um, my one requirement. It has to be temperature controlled. Thermally balanced irons, I just don't feel are the best for electronics use. So, there's some paperwork in the box, but that's about it. Alright, let me get this set up. So, we've got an US plug, three prong, three prong <laughs> grounded outlet. We've got a nice, hefty soldering iron here. We've got a conical tip. And it uses these types of tips, which I call Weller style. They may not be. You can see I ordered some more of them here. Stahi Tools SSRT soldering tips. But we'll get into that. So if I didn't say the name before, this is from Velleman, and it is the Victor Tango Sierra Sierra 5 Uniform Soldering Station. 115 volts, 50 watts, made in the PRC. That would be the People's Republic of Chinesium. Velleman, of course, headquartered in Fort Worth, Texas. Let's see what's inside. Or the, the screws are probably hiding under these little rubber feet, right? Now, oh, they're plugs. Excellent. And yes, the screws are hiding under there. The plugs are a definite plus, which means they are easily replaceable in case you have to work on your. Ow! In case you have to stab yourself in the thumb. That happens. <laughs> that happens to me more than I'd like to admit. Mm -mm. I'm gonna need a bigger screwdriver for that. These screws are tight. Feels like um, self tappers directly into plastic. Man, really tight. Okay, I don't know about you, but I don't expect to find a whole lot in here. Uh, transformer, something for uh, feedback to control the temperature, potentiometer for setting the temperature. Okay, there's even less in here than I thought there would be. Or maybe that's more. Hmm. How are we going to get that out? Any ideas? A little bit of gentle persuasion. And out she comes. And man, there is nothing here. We got a 500K pot. 
a little trimmer. Oh, screwdriver bits all over the floor. Large uh, power resistor, capacitor, transformer. Wow. So it must be using a capacitive dropper system. Or else we have AC going out to the uh, to the tip. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Wow. Check this out. All of the weight of this unit is due to that plate, which is about 3 16 inch piece of steel. There's nothing here, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's necessarily a good thing. It is simply the way this is. Now, we do not have precise temperature control. Whereas we can set an exact temperature, like we can with some of the more sophisticated soldering stations. But I'm not convinced that's absolutely a necessity. What do you think? Leave your comments below and tell me if you absolutely must be able to set the temperature precisely. I, mean, I like to do that. I like to always solder at the same temperature. That way, I know how long I have to keep the heat on something and I didn't push that in enough. Crap. Okay, side note. I totally foobarred that pot um, by pulling that apart. I have uh, you have damaged it. It doesn't want to. Doesn't want to stay. I got it on there. We'll go with that. Hopefully it'll work. I have a question for you. How often, when you take things apart, do you put all the screws back exactly? And how often do you just kind of fudge it? See, I got one screw here that for the life of me. There we go. I didn't really want to go in. And I hate to tell you, I oftentimes don't put all the screws back. Working in the engineering field, I know. I'm making hand gestures that you can't see. I should do them under the camera. Anyway, I know how things are built. I know how they're over-engineered to protect the company's bottom line, therefore protect their ass. So sometimes I don't put all the screws back. I figure one in each corner is good enough because this ain't going anywhere. It's just sitting on my desk. So I'm just curious if you do the same thing. Or is it just me? I don't know. Anyway, one other thing. Um, I get asked a lot about this screwdriver. It comes in this kit from Harbor Freight. Pittsburgh Pro, 34 piece precision screwdriver. Like, seven dollars. It's a nice little kit. Now I also have this kit that DF Robot sent me. But much like my great grandmother who never wore any new clothes anybody bought her, I'll probably never use them. <laughs> I use the ones I have that are like worn in and feel good to me. Okay, back to my original question before I foobarred this thing. I said, I like to know the temperature. I like to know what I'm doing because experience teaches me, and I'm sure it is this way in any field. I know how long I need to hold the heat on something at a certain temperature for the solder to melt. And if it doesn't, I know there's something wrong. And I'm sure it's that way with auto mechanics or aircraft or whatever else you do. After a while, you just build up a feeling, you know, when things work and when they don't work. So having um, 
one variable removed by knowing the temperature I find helps me a lot. All right, let's plug it in. It's a good thing that this thing is weighted because these cords are quite stiff and they could easily knock this off your bench. So hopefully the weight is enough. Now well, you can see that LED is on. We will turn up the heat to about a third. I can smell it. And the first thing we're going to do is tin the iron. We'll do that using a combination of these three things. Some flux, some cleaning wool, and some solder. We will dip the iron into the flux to remove any oxides built up on the tip. Then we will coat it in tin, clean it in the wool, and repeat many times until I am satisfied that the tip... Yeah, this is really stiff. It's been about 30 seconds. It's not even melting flux yet. I can kind of smell it getting hot. Turn up the heat a little bit. We'll go to two-thirds. You know, before this is over, I'm going to have this thing on full military power, right? Kind of like the Tim Taylor, kind of, oh, 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 more power thing. I try to hold back. I try to be good. I really do. This is incredibly slow to heat up. Okay, full power. I'll be back when it's hot. It's been about two minutes. And we are melting flux now. Are we melting solder yet? Yes. Okay. So now we tin. What I'm hoping to accomplish by this is to get a good to good coating of the solder all over the tip. Okay, try out the holder. Seems solid enough. Seems to melt the solder all right on full power. That's uh, it's something to try. Okay, hey, we're going to do a comparison. I got the KSGR warmed up. Set for 350C. And we got this guy somewhere in the same general area. Got a couple of 8th watt resistors. One I marked V for the Vellerman. One I marked K for the KSGR. And we'll see how they do. And zoom in for your soldering pleasure. Now, let me zoom out. Here is the Vellerman. Here is the KSTR. The tips are a little bit different, but they're close enough for government work. All right. That's the train. So let's get started. We'll start with the Vellerman. A little bit of solder on there for thermal transfer. Okay. Now we have the KSGR.
All right, my initial feelings are that the Vellerman was much hotter. So we'll turn that down a little bit, but it works just fine. Let me take a look at our, our joints there. Yeah. Less than twenty dollars, somewhere around sixty dollars. You know, they seem to work, or it seems to work just fine. We'll give it a nice tin before we put it away. It does not have an on-off switch, so you're forced to turn it off like some kind of barbarian. Not necessarily a bad thing. Do the same thing for the KSCR. Give it a nice tin before we put it away. Keeps our tips nice and shiny and happy. Didn't R.E.M. have a song about that, Shiny Happy Tips, back in the 90s? I don't know. All right, that's it. I like it. I put it in my store. It's cheap. It works. What more can you ask for, right? If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. Big thanks to you guys for watching. Say hi to Elvis the Alligator. That's it. I'm out. Peace. I want to thank you all for watching and spending time with me today. Uh, a community like this is uh, something that we can all be very proud of. So again, thank you very much for all your support of Learn Electronics. Uh, please feel free to check out the Patreon page. A dollar a month is all I ask and uh, really helps keep the channel alive. We also have an Amazon shop where you can buy most of the items that you see on here. And there's a link to it down below.